Hey, it's Anthony Venuti here with In Touch Mortgage Solutions. It's Friday, Finance Fridays, and thank you again for clicking on this episode. We're going to be talking about the Bank of Canada inflation down, interest rates up. Stay tuned. We'll get into that in just a moment. It's not time to celebrate just yet. And although the inflationary numbers for Canada have been delivered for the month of July, showing a significant slowdown from 8.1% just last month, a four-decade high, down to 7.6% for the month of July, we're not out of the woods just yet. And the Bank of Canada is obviously going to continue to raise its policy rate in order to stay ahead of inflation. Don't want to burst anybody's bubble here, but obviously there has been conversations because people are reading the headlines and saying, look, inflation is coming down. Does that mean the Bank of Canada is going to be less aggressive on their policy rate increases? But we can basically look at what economists are predicting and what we see when we look at the data that is coming out for the Canadian average on inflation. But more importantly, what the core inflation numbers are telling us with particular buckets in heating, in food, and definitely in shelter and other elements that are actually more expensive in July than they were in June. And obviously, what drove those numbers down? Was it natural or was it government intervention? We're going to be talking a little bit more about those topics and those issues in just a moment. But if you like the content that we're producing here and you like talking about inflation or hearing about the Bank of Canada policy rate increases and having a discussion about mortgage and real estate and everything in between, don't forget to hit that share, like and subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can get notified every time we post a video. So now I want to start off by going over some of the data points that economists are pointing to that will lead the Bank of Canada down the path to further increase policy rates on September 7th. Now, I do want to enter one sidebar here. And although the Bank of Canada has seen the policy rate increase over the last five months, that doesn't mean that they're going to slow down. It might mean now that inflation has basically maybe rolled over that they're not going to be as aggressive in the sense of a 1% increase in the month of September. However, in July, we saw 1% and nothing is off the table when it comes to the Bank of Canada and how they're going to approach this. They caught us all off guard in July and they may catch us off guard in September. But I do think now with those numbers, we might see for sure at least a 50 basis point increase, if not 75. So obviously, lower gas prices are what pushed our inflationary numbers down for the month of July and with prices and fuel falling 9.2 percent on the month that a lot of that had to do with provincial and government intervention so the largest decline that we've seen in fuel prices since believe it or not April of 2020 now even though we see a little bit of relief at the pumps and it's making life a little bit better for many Canadians it's still 35.6 percent more expensive to put gas in your car today than it was this time last year now fuel obviously being the major move on why we see that average come down for ontario and other provinces in canada but things like energy to heat and cool your home are actually more expensive and they've actually gone up 6.6 percent year over year for the month of july and not to mention our food prices right this every canadian needs to eat and we are seeing prices at the grocery store go up and obviously the 100 150 dollars maybe your grocery bill each week is actually buying you less and less and that number is translating to basically 9.4 percent increase in june and a 9.9 percent increase for the month of july so it's actually accelerating in the month of july not coming down now another important part is for canadians who have the ability and the leisure and luxury to travel if you're planning a trip or you're looking to basically purchase airline tickets be prepared to pay 25.5 percent more than you were just last year or month over month as all these types of leisure travel are getting more and more expensive and don't even get me started on what's happening with our airports here in toronto but anyway traveler accommodation prices are up 47.7 percent for the month of july and not to mention our restaurants if you like to go out to a restaurant once in a while and splurge a little bit it's about 7.3 percent more expensive year over year to eat out or dine out now obviously these are some major push factors on why you know we looking at the bank of canada's ability to want to increase policy rate come september 7th 
And one other indicator that's very important for many Canadians, whether you own or rent, is the shelter cost here in Canada has gone up definitely by 5.7% year over year. However, we did see a little bit of slowdown in the actual monthly average going from 7.1 to 7%, a little drop in that number. However, for anybody who's looking to rent a home in Ontario, they're definitely seeing those rent prices increase, not to mention the possibility of being in a multiple offer or having to bid up that rent price. And obviously for many Canadians who have a mortgage that might be on a variable or adjustable product or even a line of credit, for those Canadians, obviously the cost of borrowing is definitely going to be elevated come today and potentially September if the Bank of Canada continues on their policy. So some economists are going to basically be talking about how this is going to impact the Bank of Canada's decision. And much like them, I do believe that the Bank of Canada will continue to increase policy rates. Now, when you're looking at some of the headlines of inflation, obviously it did move in the right direction. This is the direction that we want to see, but it's not a trend just yet. It's one month. Just like when you look at the real estate trends, you know, the first time we saw prices decline, now we know that real estate is on the decline. Sales are down, prices are down, obviously because it's been several months. Obviously, this is the first month that we are seeing the inflationary numbers roll over. We could see potentially next month a increase. We could see a decrease. Let us know in the comment section below if you actually think inflation has rolled over. Overall, what I do want to leave off with is that we expect the Bank of Canada to definitely continue hiking its policy rates. Talking about the Bank of Canada, obviously, it's very, very important to understand where Governor Tiff Mecklem is in his mindset and obviously with all the uh, people that work for him or under him. And look at how things are sort of dissected here. When I start to look at what's happening, when I talk to people in trades and obviously people that are going through strikes and obviously looking to gain a little bit more money through, you know, union negotiations, I start to see what the wage spiral means for us here in Canada. So if you're a business owner and you're trying to retain or hire a new uh, employee uh, because the labor force is so thin, you have to be aggressive on your compensation. And by paying someone more is definitely a good for them and it definitely contributes to the society and to the economy however when you have inflationary pressures like we have here in canada it can be counterproductive and by that i mean by paying someone more for their services their wage that cost then in turn is on the business and the business definitely if they're running on tighter margins will not be able to absorb that actual loss they're going to pass that that actual cost on to the borrower you and i making it more expensive for us to get products or services completed because of the fact that the wages required to pay those individuals is higher. So that is something that the Bank of Canada has made very clear when you talk about the wage spiral and being a major issue, issue here in Canada. And obviously we have employment at a relatively low rate of 4.9%, but there has been some falling off in particular job sectors. And that is something that we need to pay attention to as the economy begins or continues to change. And as the data continues to change, on what we need to see. Now, obviously the Bank of Canada with all this data, we're still looking at elevated core inflation. We need to dissect the actual components and say, are Canadians spending more on food, leisure, entertainment, items that are not necessities? And if they're doing so, that is continuously contributing to the self-fulfilling loop of hiring the inflation rate and making things like food, travel, shelter more expensive. So that is exactly what the government wanted to do, or sorry, the Bank of Canada wanted to do, I should say. Although the government and the Bank of Canada, you know, can be together on the same page, arguably, whatever the case is. I'm not going to get into politics here on that element, but generally the Bank of Canada, whose responsibility is monetary policy and inflation to tackle that, is basically going to look at all those elements. And hopefully, we'll see what happens with the Bank of Canada come September 7th. But I hope this made a little bit clear on why I think the Bank of Canada is going to continuously increase policy rates because the inflationary data right now is not supportive of an economy that is showing signs of regression in actual core inflation. It's actually elevated to some degree. Just one element has brought it down and that is the fuel. So we'll leave the video here. We hope that everyone enjoyed the video. Thank you again for clicking and for taking the time. Don't forget to hit the share, like, and subscribe button. We wish everyone a great Friday and an even better weekend ahead. Until next week, stay tuned.